Hey guys, I had a video about this up, but for some reason it was cut off at the end and I caught a lot of flack for it. So I took it down and I gotta redo another one. Here we go, we're looking for the Lewis structure of the sulfate ion, SO4-2-. Do you guys remember how to create Lewis structures? Step one is to count the number of valence electrons. Each sulfur brings six valence electrons with it. Each oxygen brings six with it. So that's 24 total. And we have to add another two because we have a negative two charge. That means we have two extra electrons. When we add those up, we get 32 electrons. And now we need to draw the actual structure and put 32 electrons in somehow. Sulfur will go in the center because it is the, the atom here with the lowest electronegativity. Generally, the atom with the lowest electronegativity will go in the center and we'll put the four oxygens around it. When I'm drawing Lewis structures, I like to create a single bond between each of my atoms first. That accounts for two, four, six, eight electrons. Then I fill my outer atoms. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. Now, I've only put eight electrons on each oxygen. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because the oxygens have to follow the octet rule. And so many people say the structure's done right now, but there is something you have to consider called formal charge. The formal charge on any atom, I write FC, is the number of electrons that the atom brought minus the number that's around it now. And the thing to remember here, uh, the number it brought minus the number it has. Uh, yeah, it has. The thing to remember is that a lone electron will count as a full one, but because these electrons are shared, this bond of two electrons, only one atom goes to the sulfur and only one atom belongs to the oxygen. So, we've got to calculate the formal charge on each of the atoms here. Each oxygen brought six electrons. And each oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. So each oxygen has a formal charge of minus one. They're all the same right now. The sulfur brought six electrons, but it only has one, two, three, four electrons around it, which gives it a formal charge of plus two. So, we have formal charges on every atom here. The secret is that you want to minimize the formal charges and have as few as possible. The fewer formal charges you have, the more likely it is for that structure to actually be the structure you're trying to draw. How can we change the formal charge between a sulfur and an oxygen, since we have a plus and a minus right beside each other? Well, the secret is we can take two electrons from the oxygen and move them into another bond. Now, sulfur is one of the atoms that can break the octet rule, so we're allowed to put 10 electrons around it. And let's reconsider the formal charges here. This sulfur brought six and it has one, two, three, four, five electrons on it, which now gives it a formal charge of plus one. That's lower, I like it. And the oxygen here, not the other oxygens, they're still minus one, but this oxygen here brought six and it now has one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, so its formal charge is zero. There's no formal charge here anymore. That's good. Maybe we can minimize the formal charges a little bit more because we do still have a plus and a minus beside each other if we take these two electrons and move them in. Now this oxygen looks like that oxygen, so it's going to have no formal charge. And the sulfur, which brought six electrons with it, and now has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons around it. And it has no formal charge either. Wow, this is way better. We used to have plus twos and minus ones. We're down to only having minus one charges on oxygens on either side of the molecule. 
you can probably guess that that's going to actually end up being the case because there is a minus two charge here anyways. And we've eliminated the formal charge and the sulfur in the center. Now it wouldn't have mattered if you brought in electrons from the top or bottom, oxygens at the same time. The point is that this is the structure. So let's draw the final structure for you. You've got a sulfur, oxygen with a single bond, oxygen with a double bond, oxygen with a single bond, oxygen with a double bond. You have six lone electrons around these ones, four around these ones. Some teachers prefer you to put this into a little square bracket with a minus two charge on it. And if your teacher is particularly picky, you're going to have to draw it the second way with the oxygens, with the double bonds being up and down as opposed to side to side. This is called a resonance structure and it just tells your people, whoever you're telling with this structure, that it didn't matter which oxygens it came from and both of these are equally likely. Great, so there's the Lewis structure for a sulfate. If you're asked to draw the resonance structures, just flip which ones are double and single bonded and you're good to go. Hopefully this video doesn't get cut off and hopefully you don't fail the test. Best of luck.